All right, welcome everybody. I'll, I'll fix it in a second. Welcome everybody to round two. Let's tell the players that they are good to go and then we will dive in. Reminder, this is five rounds of Swix followed by a cut to top eight. And here we go. I'll fix uh, this for you. Alrighty, and just to note that there is a bug, I believe, with um, Davia and uh, Reset, but we're going to let that play anyway with Reset the Day and Davia, but Parmalee is aware of it and playing that they will not uh, they will not play those cards together for that bug, so just so we're, we're all good, we're going to let them play it out and avoid the bug in the gameplay. Oh, does Davia do something weird with? Yeah, I'm not sure the specifics reset. of what ends up happening, but I know that it, it, it messes up weird. Not, not the expected behavior, I'll say. All right, I should be able to get hand cams now, so I will get those up as well. Let's see what so this work with. Matchup is kind of a classic, like classic uh, hard control versus uh, aggro. You know, there's not going to be a board. That, like Par Parmelli is not going to try to play anything out onto the board. It's all removal spells and just. Feels weird to say the word stalling because some people like yeah. have a weird connotation of it. But really, like if you have these cards in play that give you an advantage every turn, mm -hmm. you just want to take more turns. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, funny not not having any units on, but except for that Dovid, it turns out, yeah, Dovid will give you the trash. You get a pair of two ones, and that might actually be relevant in this game. Now they're not going to block very well against the board that Phoenix is putting out. Can't block these two twos with Valor, and not blocking this Oric Record Keeper. But like you said, Parmley just kind of wants to stall, just kind of get up. It's not ramping per se because we're not skipping power drops, but really just wants to kind of hit power drops, keep developing their power, and then play some of these late games and kind of maybe uh, reset things, if you will. <laughs> Yeah, and we see a, uh, like we see a second reset being put back. Which, even if you have a ton of power, that's always going to be right unless you expect it to be negated, because you can't ever play two resets from the same hand. That I guess. Yeah. It, it doesn't, maybe it doesn't a help. Way to yeah, play it doesn't help to have the second one, right? <laughs> yeah, the second one will get put away um oh we're probably gonna see a rune bouncing argo this turn don't see any other way parmel like, lives uh yeah. yeah this is just a I nice like uh rune of relocation is an incredibly powerful card this is a power, gains you time, depleted unless you've played a sigil, which a lot of times you will have, but then amplify five, you just get to play a teleport for free. Pretty good. It's most useful when you're a tempo deck, but the influence costs aren't that harsh in this deck. They're playing a lot of power. Just a power that uh, uh, bounces... Uh, yeah. We see the first fall to ruin. That's going to take out Phoenix's board. Now, Phoenix does have more units to play out. They've got another copy of Argo. They've got an Ursa squadron as well. They also, importantly, have a vicious overgrowth. So, Armelie is going to have to be careful with the health, too. If, if Phoenix finds another way to do direct damage or a second copy of Vicious Overgrowth, game's over. Parmalee's basically at... I mean, I guess they have the Ruins, which can help put him out of that a little bit, but Parmalee's essentially at one-hit lethal. Yeah. Uh, we're probably going to see another fall to rune here and then uh potentially have to see a reset next turn Just because like you don't want to lose that second destroyed rune but you also like can you really pass up on seven new cards and seven life when you're uh in this position yeah, probably not. Phoenix, though, going to keep that pressure on. Here's a Dara Lee and an Ursa Squadron. So this is six power coming through, plus, as I mentioned, that vicious overgrowth in hand. I think we're also just going to see Sigil reset the day. No. Oh. Forget. Do, I forget. Do they have permafrost in this deck? Uh, Parmalee does not have permafrost in the market. They have one copy in the market. 
Okay. If they had it in Maine, I think they should have decided against playing the blueprints because it, like, it, it's just not worth it when you could draw Perma and be so much less behind. Meditative trance. That's an interesting one. <laughs> this wasn't the probably the best seven that Parmley drew, but as you mentioned, did get the seven health too. Seven life's gonna keep Parmley alive this turn, but also gave Phoenix a brand new seven. <laughs> yeah, although it got rid of one of the overgrowths. Which, true, true. Uh, that is true. No overgrowth in hand now for Phoenix. No good call. Parmley didn't know that, but uh, with such a low density of direct damage in the deck, it like it, okay, it gave them more units, but Carmelli likely needed uh, needs another rune or a I'm blanking if they play cover from the storm, uh, but they, they need a sweeper soon. Yeah, yeah, this hand is not great uh, after the, that reset. Carius is. They do play four copies of cover from the storm. Carius is one of the scariest cards. Uh, you can face when you're playing a control deck. It, even when you're playing one with some units, it's scary. But when you have no units, it's going to two for one you and possibly make more uh, units. Yeah, one Phoenix can take that one. There wasn't, Parmalee just on that reset the day, just really didn't hit any more action and just really couldn't stabilize after that. But well played by Phoenix, was able to, you know, sometimes when you're an aggro deck, it's hard to beat a Wrath, but was able to basically beat two Wraths there and just keep that pressure going. One thing I want to point out that's an important principle when you're playing against, uh, like, a Destroyed Rune deck, it, from Phoenix's seat, they should not be thinking about, oh, is this a good card or a bad card? Like, like, Parmelli is playing it. It's going to be played in the game. Mm -hmm. Think about the impact it will have. Not Don't think about how good of a card it is, or if you think, you know, it's a card you want to build a deck around. Okay. You know, you just play against what's put in front of you, because whatever tier a deck is, doesn't matter in the gameplay. It doesn't, you know, it, like, it may be people's, it may be based on people's conception of, how good decks are, but it does not help you if you say, oh, I should win this. My opponent's playing Destro. You know, that's an easy way to lose games is think, you know, un underestimating the impact your opponents can have. Yeah, I like that game. a lot, actually. I really like how you went through that. That makes a lot of sense that, you know, you think about the card advantage is sort of over at that point. You're not you're not drafting these cards. You're not in deck building mode anymore. You're playing against what they brought. So it doesn't matter whether you think it's a good or card or not. And honestly, I think you could take that a step further and say it's good for your mental health too. You know, if you're sitting there getting frustrated because, <laughs> you know, you play a card that maybe you don't think is as good, doesn't do any value for you. <laughs> yeah. Like, you should still think about, okay, I can maybe try to out-card my opponent if they play a lot of relics that are just gaining life. But you shouldn't just say, oh, that's a bad card, not doing anything to the game. I'm going to ignore it. Yeah. Yeah, good call. All right, game two, Phoenix up a game. Parmley going to start off with a Blueprints here on the play and going to go grab a Time Sigil. So got all three factions available to them. They have a Defile, which is a big card against Dovid. It's the best answer to the janitor in the format. Uh, Speaking of which, two copies in hand for Phoenix two power for two power and then you get actually it's you get four power for two power mm -hmm. yeah you do because you get those two ones out you know we don't really see it a lot of times that downside doesn't really come up with dovin it's really just mostly upside but in a deck like this if you can take that out on turn two and get those units that partly might be able to jump block with or just stay alive with it actually is relevant at downside here comes the second copy. No second copy of Defile for Parmelee here. So let's see. Dovid going to draw an Auric Record Keeper with this trigger. Uh, I Am Straight did clarify, by the way, that the bug is that when you play Reset the Day with Davia in your hand, the Davia is not shuffled back into your deck. That's a really relevant bug. That is, <laughs> like, getting to keep the best card and or what... It would be hard to imagine a situation where Davia isn't one of the best cards in your hand. So like, getting to keep that is... That is interesting. Yeah, I wonder if that's because of the Void Bound or something else, but it's pretty interesting. Uh, 
I was sitting in what's called with TRS brewing cool decks, and we were like, okay, we're going to try Moment of Creation Davia. <laughs> yeah. And we got the Moment of Creation in the Void, and we played the Davia, and it didn't do anything. <laughs> and it was just really sad, because I love yeah. Moment decks. I like getting a lot of value out of my cards, and I was, yeah, I'm going to get a second Moment from it. Uh, probably going to see both two ones and the, I guess, probably the 4-4. Four, four. Because yeah. five is only one more than four, and you get two more soldiers if you. And that's what I would do. I think that's the best block player. there. Z Grendel, thank you I so think... much for the follow and the kind words in chat. Much appreciated. Yeah, I, I, I do think that's the best block. Now these two, these two are going to be stunned, but I would agree that's pretty good. Although the Darley also has that other ability though, which can be relevant in the late game. That we didn't see that bottled insight, which is. Carmelli is saying they don't need to play a Fall to Rune this turn, which I think I agree with. Mm -hmm. If they did want to, they should have just cycled it. Uh, and crack the coveted gemstone to go grab the permafrost. I like that. It's a good answer to that Auric Record Keeper. This cover for the storm is a little bit awkward because it doesn't kill the Record Keeper. It only kills the Dara Lee, but it also kills your trash too. So not really the best card right now. You almost want Phoenix to go wider before deploying that. So Parmalee going to go grab the Permafrost with the Coveted Gemstone to take care of that 4-4. Good answer for the 4-4 with Entomb, though. Cover from the Storm is awkward against Soldiers because they're a go-wide, aggressive deck, but they also have Argo's Technique to negate it if it's doing a lot, and often it just doesn't do a ton against 4-4 after 4-4 after 4-4. Yeah, it's true. Uh, we, we're probably going to see mandatory retirement on Valise and then yeah. cover from the storm. You kind of just have to give up the, well, do you... I wonder if you can just do this this turn and wait. I don't, do you even need to cover from the storm here? Yeah, you probably don't need to cover from the storm. Yeah, I like this gemstone line better, and that's nice sequencing, because if you did that in the opposite order, they... Phoenix would have an opportunity to play Argos Technique. Mm, yep, that's true. Just another reason to, before you make your play, sit back and think about the implications of the order you're going to do them in. You know, it, playing, making your plays one at a time rather than planning them out all in advance is already not a great thing to do, but this is just one more reason to do that. Yeah, no, that's a good like, point. Think through your Think through your turn as much as possible. Don't even play your power out until you know what you're going to do. All right, here's uh, Tarius, as you mentioned. Good one. Has that Aegis, which is tough for what Parmley's doing. And with the Darley trigger, going to be able to attack in for, for five here. So I wonder if it's a double block or if it's just a chump because you're going to cover from the storm. But I guess if you're going to cover from the storm next turn, it doesn't make a difference whether you chump or double block. Oh, if you're going to cover, I like double block because they either let it happen or they play a trick, mm -hmm. and it, you can like bait that Argos technique out of their hand because if they don't play technique, then they just have a two. Well, I guess they also have Terius in play, yeah. but the board isn't that big. Yeah, good call right on that now. double block. Yep. So we're gonna seek power here, and Phoenix does have the Argos technique, and not necessarily that Parmalee knows that, but Parmalee did see, does know that there is a fast spell. I'm not sure Phoenix's deck, but as you mentioned, you can pull up the deck list and see what fast spells are. Are available, so it's probably no surprise that there's an Argos technique in hand. We'll strategize. Parmley has no copies of Ruin, though, right? So they do have that Pinnacle of the Reach. So they they had to have the setup. They cleared the board a couple times. They're or they at least played defense well enough to get into the late game. They've got eight power. They've got two copies of Pinnacle, but no Ruin yet. What they're getting from the market the gemstone and they got a chain restraint that's an interesting one not not a card you see all the time no uh, definitely not i believe it you gain a life whenever your opponent draws a card and first player can't, can't play more than one spell each turn when they draw a card you gain so it is drawing gaining one health every time they draw a card and they can't play more than one spell each turn now this is not magic so spell means spell means magical spell does not mean units um, it doesn't mean everything, so it just not. 
I don't know how relevant that is. It might affect combat tricks, but I doubt soldiers is usually playing multiple spells a turn to begin with. So it does mean you can't double up on Argo's technique to negate stuff when your opponent gets a lot of power. True. Probably seeing... Oh. Alright, Lay Siege. Oh, Ready that's... units, they get endurance. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that puts on a lot of pressure. That's basically playing a charge 4-4. Mm -hmm. Here comes another Terrius. Another yeah. Terrius, yeah. Recover from the storm, not even going to take care of those. It also doesn't take care of the Orc Record Keeper either. Ooh, there's Fall to Ruin, though. Fall to Ruin with two power backup. I don't think the cover does enough. I think you have to uh, fall to rune. Well, you have to play power and then fall to rune. Yes, power power first to play around the Argos to Niki plus fall to ruin. I guess you have this defile too. Yeah, you can't... You're... Can't survive. Oh, that's bold. <laughs> bold pass back. I guess you have the, the the file you have, the fast file, but that's pretty bold passing back. Well, Phoenix can't do anything about the defile. Right. Uh, it can only play one Argos technique. Right. They can only I don't play one know about that. I don't like that defile because it's going to trigger and it's going to give one of the Terrius. Mm. Plus one plus, one, plus one, one. So it's going to be the same amount of damage. And they're going to get... And they have a better unit. And they're going to get an Awakened. Yep. Oh, and they're discarding because they have so many cards in their hand. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> they actually discarded the Awakened. That's really funny. Actually, no. Interesting interaction that I missed because I don't play a lot with Arcane Constraint. Uh, those... Awaken that are drawn, give Parmeli life. That is true. They count as drawing a card, so you gain one life for each one. Good catch. Hypho's here. Let's see what the trigger is. Going to go three times and going to make it a 7-8 flyer. Still have the Argos technique up, but Parmeli does have the fall to ruin, so... And can pay yeah, for it. Oh, this is tough, though. Don't you... Gotta, you gotta... Oh, stand firm. You can't play the Ruin into Fall to Ruin. Here, what I do if I was Parmeli is I double-check how many Shadow or Primal Sigils I have in my deck, and then lead with blueprint. Felon Blueprint if I have any left, mm -hmm. because now the Blueprint can be negated, which is... they may, Who knows if they want to negate the Blueprint? But, but you give your opponent the option, which isn't... Yeah. All right, well, that did work for Parmalee, so was able to get the Fall to Ruin with the power back up and then play out both the Blueprints and the Detro's Ruin. So that's what Parmalee wanted to do with that turn. Phoenix has a bunch of cards in hand, though. But Parmalee is gaining health for each one of those, back up to 16. It, yeah, they're getting... They have their engine going. Uh, and they're going to be able to reset know, the good. day, presuming they can live this turn, next turn, take a hit. They're getting two life every time Phoenix draws a card. That's a lot of life. But this is a lot of beef on board, too. Now that Defile probably helps. Oh, bottled Insight with uh, Meditative Trance is nice because you're only... Net, like, it's card neutral in terms of uh, card advantage, but it's... You're drawing more cards, mm -hmm. even if you have to discard them. Right. You still get the... It still counts as drawing cards, so you still get that health back. Interesting that there is no... Uh, well, I guess... Parmel is probably planning to play bottled, or Defile and then Bottled Insight Amplified once. Yeah, now interestingly, Phoenix does have three copies of Vicious Overgrowth in hand as well, which I don't think is going to be enough here because Parmalee can always defile. Parmalee can also draw some more cards to gain some more life, but 
Yeah, Phoenix. Look, it's it's gotta be frustrating from Phoenix standpoint when you have three three copies of four fours plus three copies of vicious overgrowth, and Parmalee just keeps getting out of it with their life gain. <laughs> A resolved reset the day should end this game. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be pretty tough. Wouldn't be shocked if they just slam. Like, I'd be tempted to just slam it next turn because okay, you're you're losing gemstone strategy and stuff, but it's mm. gaining you twenty one. Yeah, does Argo change that at all? I don't think Argo can push twenty one more damage though. I think you're probably just okay with Argo there. All right, we are going to negate the bottled insight. Draw a couple more cards though. There's a Davia. All right, I wonder. Well, I guess we'll find out with how this bug is played because Parmley had the chance to do that now. So I wonder if we're going to say play reset the day, but then you can't play the Davia the rest of the game, or you can't cast reset the day. Either way, it kind of stinks. Um, unfortunately, we got to play with what we have, or just play the Davia first. Yeah, that'll do it as well. Probably gonna see a uh, fall to rune. We're almost done. We only have this match plus one other one still going, but yeah, there you go, fall to ruin here. That's pretty good. That's a good Davia fall to ruin there, and this is gonna be tough for Phoenix because Parmalee is now just gaining so much life and drawing cards here. I mean, yeah, Phoenix can reset a little bit, but. Their hand's not looking great, and I don't think they're going to be able to reset and push damage fast enough for Parmalee to just draw a bunch of cards and gain a bunch of health. I think you're right. This might be over here. Winners on the back tables, by the way, while we're playing this one out. I'm so bad. TCG Cthulhu, Croge, Lord Perth, Arcade, Dumpster Baby, The Overmaster, Duo Cat, Jez2718, Game Gromp, and Ash Acer are the winners so far. Got a couple new names in there. Welcome, new players. Yeah, always great to see new people diving into the tournament scene. Absolutely. All right, Argo into a Hyphos. But as we said, unfortunately for Phoenix, these are fine units, but it's it's not enough. It's not snowballing, right? Parmel every turn that you pass back, Parmelee is just getting more and more cards and more and more health, and Phoenix is a, and Phoenix's threats are getting lighter and lighter. The copy of Pinnacle the Reach, and we might see the reset the day here. Yeah, here we go. Reset the day. That's going to be seven fresh cards for both players. A ton of triggers. Oof. Let's see what uh, Phoenix drew here. Phoenix did not. No copies of Argo's Technique. They drew Destroyer's uh, Rune, Rune, which yep. uh, will mean they gain how many? A lot. <laughs> they gain a lot of life. They gain a lot, and also another copy of Cover the Storm, another copy of Fall to Ruin, um, and now this life is 58 to 7. I don't think there's anything Phoenix can do to come back from this one, and yeah, sure enough, that's going to be that one, so Phoenix is going to toss in Game 2, so we're going to get out. We're going to get a Game 3. This is going to be our last match, but uh, yeah, Parmalee forcing that Game 3. Well played to navigate that one. There were a couple moments where I think Phoenix... You know, it looks scary, but Parmalee was able to draw the right cards and play things in the right order. And credit to them for playing around that Argos technique. Pretty much every single time it mattered, Parmalee was able to navigate it where they did not tap down to pay the cards they needed. Yeah, there were a lot of... Uh, there were a lot of subtle play, subtly different plays that would have lost that game, but they, they avoided all those pitfalls. All right, so while we're there getting ready for their game three, so your 2-0 players so far are the Overmaster, Croge, and I'm so bad. Uh, just a reminder that there's no sense in conceding early. If you have time to play, go ahead and play because you get points for all of these wins. All right, our players are ready. And that last one was, it looks like Derek Davis took a 2-1 over Tempest Dragon King. So we're ready for our game three. Let's head down. We've got Parmalee at the bottom, Phoenix at the top. Players tied one game apiece. Let's tell them they're good to go. And this is the last match of round three. Or round two, I'm sorry. Uh, you probably have to keep this. You have no time, but you, your most important time card is a seven drop. So you you don't even need to hit time until turn six and turn seven. On the other side of things, Phoenix looking at an Iron Priestess of Elise and a Vicious Overgrowth and four power. So 
Not the fastest starting hand, also on the draw. So those things are lining up well for Parmalee, but I think this is going to depend a lot on what the next couple turns look like in the next couple draws for both players. Also, being on the play is huge here. Uh, when you get to play the rune out and then start answering the soldiers rather than answering the soldiers and try to fit in the rune. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That is key to get that rune down first. All right, Iron Priestess out, but that's not going to be too much of a threat for Parmalee. Parmalee might be able just to ignore that until, until turn six. We'll see what other pressure Phoenix can put on. But if Parmalee can navigate this where they don't have to play anything that impacts the board until turn six for this Fall to Ruin, that's going to be really good. Of course, Phoenix, if they drew an Argos Technique, would be able to break that up. But no Argos Technique in hand right now, and you never know how that's going to play out. Probably just see a Davia put back here because I don't, I think it, you don't need that right now. You don't need that now, and I don't know if you can. Maybe you can afford to put away the Shadow Sigil, but uh, oh, reset the day. That also makes sense. Yep, kind of similar decision there. I think both of those. You're not going to play either of those anytime soon. You want to make sure you're developing your power. Ooh, Parmalee also has the, the Rune of Relocation, too. Second copy of Ruin. So Parmalee has the answers if they can get to that turn. It looks like they will because Phoenix had no play last turn. So this is an interesting dynamic here that can slide either way. It, if Soldiers gets a fast enough start, they can say, anything more out, I'm going to hold up Argo's technique. But if they get are, have too slow of a start, they either can't afford to hold it up, or they hold it up, they negate it. And then the control player says, okay, I'll just play another one next turn because you're not killing me fast enough. Mm -hmm. uh, we could just see bouncing that Valise here. Yeah. Yeah, we could see that because you don't need to... The alternative is Pinnacle of the Reach, Pinnacle. but... Yeah, we're just going to yeah, see I... the Amplify Teleport. I mean, when you can just play out your power and, like I said, just kind of get a free card out of it, and this was the perfect time for that card because Phoenix really just had the... That was the only unit really pressuring here, doing anything impactful, and Parmalee was able to get rid of it without costing a card. Didn't have to play a card to bounce that unit and get a huge tempo gain there. Parmalee gets to play Falderoon well at 20... For the first time, well at 20... Oh, I guess... No, they're not. Or, <laughs> okay, they're at 18. They get to play Falderoon so, when they're at yeah. 18. Alderoon while at, at 18. Phoenix is tapped down, so you don't have to worry about Argos technique there. Yeah, going to take care of those units. Drew a Blueprints for turn anyway, but normally going back up to 19 with Davia, Falderoon, Pinnacle, and Blueprints in hand. Unfortunately for Phoenix, it just this hand developed way too slowly for them and being on the draw. All right, gonna... Also, Parmelli is gaining life whenever... Iron Priestesses or Dovids or Terriuses <laughs> or even Valises do yep. their thing. <laughs> there are a few units in Phoenix of Death that don't give Parmelli life. All oh. right, and that was this another third copy of Falderun drawn there. Let's just take it out and get the trash from the janitor here. Parmelli has the Davia now as well, blueprints in hand, things looking good. I'm, as Parmelli might want to hold on to this to try to get I, the heirloom. I'm not sure if they care or not, though. I don't think they should be holding on to it because the power is the power is just going to let them get farther ahead xena and heirloom is kind of like nice sometimes but it really shouldn't be evaluated as that important when you have davias in your deck and you have pinnacle to draw into more cards and when you have more cards in hand you just want more power to be able to play them i find it unlikely that using the heirloom is ever going to be the best thing permanently can in a turn uh yeah ht rouse that had a good question about phoenix's deck playing uh some random factionless cards in the market yes you can flip a ran you can flip a soldier off of uh you just flip a grafter off of the technique and that can give you access to the market also hit stormhalt warden which even if you play draft you probably don't know what that is or <laughs> purposefully forgot about it because of how bad it is but it's a 5 cost 3-2 that has Entomb swap a unit in your hand for one in your market. So, yeah, there are two cards you can get off of 
Argo's technique. And there's no downside to playing more stuff in your market. There's no Damara in this format. Mm -hmm. So it comes up sometimes, you know, you have your one bargain invasive species, and then you have four slots that just aren't doing anything. So there's uh, no downside to putting factionless units because of factionless cards mostly because of Grafter and then like at least one factionless unit because of Stormholt Warden. Phoenix is able to just doing what they can, just trying to play out this board. Of course, we know that Parmalee has many more access to more Wraths here, has another copy of Faldron here. And now with Pinnacle of the Reach drawing more cards, triggering Ruin a couple more times, Parmalee is just going to line up the pre-Wrath attack. <laughs> not, not too much surprising going here, getting, you know, might as well. There's no reason not to attack if you're going to follow up with the Fall to Ruin. Um, also can... Well, that doesn't really work. You don't really want a Davia into a, a copy of Fall to Ruin, not, not until you have it fully pumped up. But here comes that Fall to Ruin. That's going to wipe the board again. Phoenix down to one card. Oh, I guess they do have the Aegis on these. So I missed that. The, the Terriuses do have Aegis. We're probably going to see a Davia for Fall to Ruin next turn as well. Yeah. Going to need that to take care of these units. Parmley is gaining life, but it's at this point, it doesn't look like it's fast enough to outrace what's on the board. Not like last game, so Parmalee's going to have to do something else here to answer these units. And Cover of the Storm, not going to be big enough, not going not gonna to take care of this 5-5, five five, so it's going to have to be more than that. It might be a scary turn for Parmalee unless they draw a power. Uh, there's no Argos technique, and they probably can't afford to play around it, but they're still going to be holding their breath uh, when they play the Davia. Right. Or Phoenix, Phoenix is going to dump their hands. All right, there's a Defile, but I think Parmalee's still just going to go. I think it's probably just Davia to Fall to Ruin. Clear that board again. Here we see it again, Fall to Ruin. doesn't matter that we drop the Davia. It's just an expensive, it's just an extra copy of Fall to Ruin is all that is. Can we read that cost one? Yeah. Exactly. All right, Phoenix, though. Ursa Squadron awakened and has a Dara Lee in hand. But Parmalee is just going to keep gaining life. There's a second copy of Ruin. That'll make things go a little quicker, too. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah, this game is basically over at this point. A second copy of Ruin. Cover from the Storm taking out those units. Phoenix now in top deck mode has a Dara Lee in hand, but that's about it. Gaining two life off of all these draws. Just a Darley and two power. I think this one's over. Yeah, not even a unit to amplify with. That's brutal. <laughs> Probably see a... I guess, is there any reason to play out the... Yeah, I like playing out the trance, and then no reason to draw them into cards yet. Just... Yeah, and that's Wait gonna get the all. that's gonna get the heirloom here, which means drawing and discarding three cards will trigger. That's what there's two ruins, right? So that's six trigger or three triggers, but six triggers off of that, six damage off of that. So there are two destroyed runes on Phoenix, right? Correct. So this reset the day is just lethal. Oh yeah, the, I didn't even see the reset the day. Yeah, I think that's just lethal. You're right. I'm sitting here trying to get fancy play syndrome on the heirloom, but you still have a game winning hand card in hand. <laughs> or we start out with Davia, it. strategize. I don't know what they could be playing around. Yeah, I'm not sure. Here, you just double Argos technique is technically awkward, but I. I think this is a hard game to lose at this point. But yeah, that's I also... true. <laughs> If they have double Argos technique and that's their whole hand, then you can just follow up with Davia next turn. Is Dovid also? Oh, wait, there's a Davia in hand, so that would technically be bug exploitation. Oh, good call, good call. Yep, you're right. Good observation there. Forgot about the Davia in hand, so I have to play out the Davia first. But I love that, yeah, the Dovid drawing is is going to hits the ruins, as does Seek Power, which is in hand. So Phoenix not playing out the Seek Power, not going to draw that. 
Yeah, the Defile's gonna be good though. Like like we said a couple turns ago, Parmalee now just has the setup. It might take a couple turns to win, but um, reset the day should do it here. Each player draws seven. Two ruins on Phoenix, that should be 14 damage. There we go. All right, well played Parmalee.